हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन वीक वन वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट मेम्ब्रेन आर्किटेक्चर एंड पैसेज ऑफ वाटर एंड ऑस्मेटिक बैलेंस इन दिस वीक वी विल टॉक अबाउट सेल मेम्ब्रेन ट्रांसपोर्ट the topics include passive transport it is called as selective transport or aided transport across the cell membrane and diffusion of ions through the channels then next the facilitated diffusion and active transport then bulk transport so these are all the words you can refer transport process that means movement of substances through the cell membrane how it takes place we will be studying that concept this is one picture which represents the membrane transport process in a very simple manner you might have heard this word plasma membrane is selectively permeable that means the component in the plasma membrane they are acting like the gatekeepers you just see one molecule is coming close to the cell membrane and this is nothing but a protein which we have discussed earlier uh the embedded protein you can call or a transmembrane protein so which will ask do you have an appointment to get inside this cell so this kind of selective permeability or semi permeable it is also called as semi permeable that means all molecules are not allowed immediately to enter into the cell this is the fundamental concept you have to understand while considering the membrane transport let us talk about passive transport movement of molecules that do not requires energy it is called as passive transport atp molecules adenosine triphosphate molecules all of you know we consume food and we are getting atp from that and that it is a energy currency which we use it for our activities and under passive transport this process will come into picture and diffusion which we have seen little about the gas molecules i mentioned in the previous week topic and we have also discussed about osmosis but all this process will come as come under passive transport and there is another facilitated diffusion that is somewhat slightly different let us see what is that facilitated diffusion is all about and as i discussed you earlier diffusion is movement of molecule from higher concentration to the lower concentration okay especially the gas molecules you can consider and osmosis specifically refers to water movement of water from higher concentration to its lower concentration right yeah the transport across cellular membrane to exchange why that takes place transport what is the necessity of transport of molecules to exchange materials with surroundings in part to take in nutrients as well as give off waste all of you know our cell is utilizing the nutrients for its growth and after its metabolism it is giving off some waste that need to be exported out from the cell so that is how 
you can call either exchange or transport that process is been regulated by our membrane in the uh, you know specific uh, nature that is called as selective permeability means allow only some molecules to pass through the membrane not all the molecules with a regulated manner and this nature how it is been derived in the cell membrane let us see as we have discussed these words hydrophobic and hydrophilic water attracting and water fearing phobia is the word for fearing philic attraction right so these two regions are there if you consider the tail structure is you know in the in that molecules if you just remember so head like structure are towards the external of the cell membrane that means tail like structure are actually hydrophobic head loves water right hydrophilic and this region actually helps for the diffusion of some molecules and hinder the uh, diffusion of other molecules if you see diffusion itself as a process and that is one of the major region or a reason uh, for this semi permeability nature hydro presence of hydrophobic as well as hydrophilic regions then fat soluble substances are able to pass through the hydrophobic interior of the plasma membrane and diffuse into the cell easily now this you can understand easily here hydrophobic interior that means the tail structure whatever we have in a cell membrane which will allow the fat soluble molecules easily okay and there are some polar molecules polar charged molecules you can call and water is a polar molecule right so polar molecules and charged molecules do not diffuse easily through this lipid core of the plasma membrane they must be transported across the proteins okay or sugars or amino acids and these components just like we know our cell membrane is composed of majorly proteins and there are some carbohydrates and you can call this small fraction of or the component of building block we call of proteins is amino acids okay so this is how you know polar molecules cannot go easily into the cell membrane because it is a lipid bilayer okay and that is how ultimately you can come to a conclusion cell membrane structure itself detects the membrane membrane permeability in that as i mentioned hydrophobic you can call that as non polar regions in that molecules in that in that space the molecules with this nature hydrophobic or non polar nature can cross the membrane rapidly you can link this word here you see oxygen as well as carbon dioxide they can easily dissolve in the lipid bilayer and pass through the membrane quickly and also hydrocarbon right so this is probably problematic for us all of you know this emissions contains lot of hydrocarbons that may enter into our cell that means our cell has one you know permeable nature that means because of its lipid bilayer it can easily transport oxygen and carbon dioxide which is very much essential you know oxygen is very much essential for cell to respire and carbon dioxide need to be exported out after the respiration and they are not hindered by the cell membrane they can easily move in and move out so that is the concept if you are thinking just you uh, try to correlate and polar molecules cross slowly as i mentioned earlier now which are all the things coming under polar molecules they might be sugars charged proteins 
as well as water and see this word water what about water water is very much essential for the cell like oxygen as well as you know carbon dioxide which moves out the transport of this water is also very much essential but it is coming under polar molecule we in the previous slide we just discussed that polar molecules or as well as charged molecules do not diffuse easily through the membrane now what about water but still you can see a movement of water through the cell membrane easily you can just visualize this part water is moving like anything here from high water potential or low solute concentration we call to the low water potential high to low water from its higher concentration to its lower concentration okay or else you can say solute low solute concentration high water potential or high water concentration you can correlate right if water is more means there is less solute right so that is how you can compare but our idea is this water moves very easily and this was a kind of dilemma for many years even after this fluid mosaic model proposed in 1970s still there is a confusion how water molecule is moving even becoming polar molecule where according to our principle this lipid bilayer will not allow easily this polar molecule to move in and out yes there was a discovery that is called as aquaporins it is a water channel and protein pores are there during that osmosis these protein pores are helping for our water molecule to move okay so this phenomena is been discovered by a scientist peter agre at john hopkins university in 1992 and uh, he was just studying some concept in the cell membrane and unintentionally he discovered this a very specific structure called as aquaporin this is the name of the protein aqua word refers to water he earned nobel for his unintentional discovery in 2003 just see how many years it took that person to prove that water molecules are have been allowed by these aqua pores you might have seen the structure like this very complex structure alpha helices and beta sheets or these are all the protein structures and complicated structures uh, and that, that is how finally he dis discovered that concept and i hope now you can understand water is been moving through our membrane by the help of water channels or channel proteins called as aquaporin yeah there there comes the concept facilitated diffusion and that process whatever we discuss this aquaporin is coming under our channel protein uh, this is what you can see it is not a simple diffusion no doubt it looks like a diffusion but there is something facilitated facilitation right facilitated diffusion okay somebody is facilitating which is nothing but proteins okay so there we have some carrier proteins as well as some channel proteins like our aquaporins and another type of proteins are also there like carrier protein they are specific to some molecules and they can bind here and then they will send inside the cell only when cell requires those molecules and after seeing those fundamental thing like hydrophobic region as well as hydrophilic regions here another component you can see these proteins acting like a barrier okay or selectively allowing some molecules yeah those things comes under passive transport diffusion facilitated diffusion as well as our osmosis related to water and another term you see here active transport there is a specific term atp 
so active transport is movement of molecules against the concentration gradient that means if i say diffusion or osmosis from higher concentration to lower concentration here it is from lower concentration to higher concentration by the help of atp or by by losing energy so there are two types of active transport process you can understand uh, you can uh, discuss one is ion pumps which is called as primary active transport what are all these ion pumps most of the ion channels that have been identified till date are open or closed conformation this is about their weave or their structural appearance okay open or closed type of channels which we have seen like aqua pouring kind of channels and they may be specifically for ions na plus right sodium ions calcium ions k plus potassium ions all those ions are also very much essential for our cell so those things are moved by the help of these ion pumps uh, and they they can be called as gated you know they gated means voltage or chemical gated we can call and uh, so that means uh, there is a specific mechanism of these ions are also moving inside the cell or moving out of the cell so that is how you can see under active transport you you see these ion pumps as the uh, you know major uh, primary active transport mechanism and there is another transport mechanism called as co transport which is which is uh, uh, referred as secondary active transport and we will see it is the mediated by active transport and and there is a movement of molecules by the help of active transport and uh, uh, because of that concentration gradient developed during this normal active transport some molecules are moving inside the cell and outside the cell without the help of atp so that is what we call co transport that process we will see okay this is the general discussion about the active transport which requires energy performed by the specific membrane proteins and you know it uses the energy to move solutes against their gradients okay and one example is sodium potassium pump so that is what we are just discussing ion pumps okay in plant fungi and bacteria they they have a proton pump we know proton hydrogen plus ions and this hydrogen ions plus ions are moving inside and outside the cell by the help of proton pumps specifically the proteins which will be sending this h plus ion see concentration is less here okay from less concentration itself it is been sent outside the cell by spending energy okay that is how we call it as that process as active transport and in animals we have a sodium potassium pump so let us see what is this sodium potassium pump is all about and this one diagrammatic representation just you go through uh, this uh, portion of the video uh, many times so that you can understand all these steps will i will briefly explain you what is this entire step is all about it is a process of sodium and k plus ions moving inside and outside the cell and what is this process you see slightly complicated but you can understand there is a mechanism very good mechanism see this step number 1 cytoplasmic sodium ions bo bonds to the sodium potassium pump and this is entire structure is called as sodium potassium pump and this portion of the protein is specific to our na plus ions okay now you see extracellular concentration of na plus na plus is already high but what you are doing now na plus is low here inside the cell but you are sending those na plus ions again to the higher concentration concentration itself and uh, the moment na plus ions are binding to this specific portion of the protein it stimulates the phosphorylation in the by the atp and atp becomes adp and you know it has been energy has been released and our na plus ions are uh, has been sent to sent outside the cell 
of phosphorylation causes the protein to change its conformation that means because of that phosphorylation process uh, you know you can understand uh, that the conformation of this protein has changed now somewhat it became like this see this type this portion is closed now earlier this portion was closed and now this portion is closed and these Na plus ions are sent out by expelling the Na plus ions outside and, and another phenomenon at that time the extracellular K plus ions will be binding here okay now you see K plus ions concentration is low here K plus ions concentration is high here and at that time you see now you are sending this K plus ions from outside the cell to the inside the cell by the help of see binds to the protein triggering the release of the phosphate group and what happens the phosphate group which was attached earlier while this uh, phosphorylation occurred and this will detach okay triggering the release of phosphate so phosphate will be released now and loss of phosphate restores the proteins original conformation like this and at that time our k plus ions came inside okay k plus is released and any plus sites are receptive again for our next cycle and this entire cycle repeats this is called as sodium potassium pump to more about to, to know more about this you can search any other source okay it is generally called as sodium potassium pump which is one of the active transport process that is occurring inside our cell let us see what is this code transport is all about when active transport of one molecules uh, solutes indirectly drives the transport of another which i just told you at that point of time plants plant commonly commonly use this uh, proton gradient to generate proton pumps to drive the transport of nutrients into the cell let us see this example which has been explained in another slide simply here now just see sucrose molecule is there outside okay and so you can you wanted to send this sucrose molecule inside the cell but this one we have already discussed h plus ions from its lower concentration sending into the outside by the help of atp that is called as proton pump okay and moment that diffusion of h plus ions uh, occurs here there are a lot of h plus ions by that h plus ions concentration there is a sugar sucrose molecule which can enter inside the cell without the help of atp see this process there is no atp involved but this concentration difference is pushing this sucrose molecule inside the cell that is why we call this as a co-transport process okay i hope you understood this concept yeah the last topic is about bulk transport small molecules okay about water molecules all these things we know now they are enter or leave the cell through the lipid bilayer either by diffusion or by transport proteins uh, involving active transport or uh, you know primary active transport secondary active transport or co-transport what about large molecules they how they are moving inside and outside the cell large molecules such as polysaccharides hormones and proteins cross the membrane via vesicles you just remember this word vesicles okay there are specific phenomena that are that are existing see exocytosis what is this exocytosis you just remember exporting exo exporting okay exocytosis transport of those vesicles formed you know they are migrated to the cell membrane fuse with it and will release the content outside the cell that means sending out those content from the cell is exocytosis many examples you can take in the inside the cell like many secretory cells use exocytosis to export their products like pancreatic cells insulin you know insulin of the uh, hormone which is uh, released from the pancreatic cells from the beta cells it has been secreted in that process if you just observe this diagram you can understand that so uh, golgi apparatus so the uh, deep com uh, component of the cell you might have seen you just observe how it is formed and finally a plate like uh, you know structure is found here and finally it came here and the step four it has been fused with the membrane and proteins have been secreted okay that is how it is formed and it is exported by the help of by the process called as exocytosis by formation of vesicles
and now there is another phenomena endocytosis you can easily understand exocytosis is exporting endocytosis is something like importing cell takes in macromolecules by forming vesicles at the plasma membrane there are three specific process under endocytosis just remember all these process they are important phagocytosis the word phagocytosis cellular eating we call it as cellular eating there is a very simple picture in the next slide you can easily understand but try to memorize now itself phagocytosis is something like cellular eating cell engulfs some of the particles in a vacuole and that can enter inside the cell and there is another process called as pinocytosis it is called as cellular drinking that means cell creates a vesicle around a fluid here it might be a solid particle phagocytosis here it is a liquid particle and that is how cellular drinking process came for your understanding you can remember pinocytosis linking to the word pineapple juice right it is funny right you can remember pinocytosis pineapple juice that means it is a drinking there is a fluid that has been taken inside the cell okay receptor mediated endocytosis there is another process of endocytosis where binding of ligands with the receptors triggers the vesicle formation and because of that molecules are entered inside the cell and all those three process of endocytosis has been explained in this simple slide very you know in a convenient way solid particles comes here and get inside the cell by forming a phagosome uh, it is called as phagocytosis pinocytosis extracellular fluid they have been taken like a pockets here and they are entering inside the cytoplasm called as pinocytosis and receptor mediated endocytosis you see it may be liquid or solid whatever but there are some receptors ready here and based on their preference they will bind here and coated pit will be formed and finally they can enter inside the cell so these are all the process of endocytosis i hope you have understood all the topics related to the cellular transport and uh, uh, yeah that is all about uh, the topics related to cell membrane transport thanks